uh, I'm going to start recording this session because we know that, uh, you know, many people uh, would like to probably learn about uh, the life of entrepreneurs that are coming to this country, that are coming to, uh, to Canada, and how has they, they have been uh, doing all this stuff, uh, you know, while we are becoming entrepreneurs as well, uh, you know, expanding business international. So my name is Miriam Lazarte. I'm the CEO of Latam Startups. And today uh, we are presenting three cases, um, showcasing, you know, the startups that already finished uh, with the soft landing program with some of them. Uh, we have more webinars coming up with some others. They are in different industries. So you guys are going to learn a lot about, you know, how has been this journey for them. So I'm going to introduce first uh, the entrepreneurs and uh, I will ask them to share a little bit about the, uh, you know, their background and uh, you know, their companies. So we have Bruno Santiago from Brazil. He has been here in, in Canada for already some uh, few years. We have Kartik uh, from India. He's also uh, here in Canada from a few years. And we have Hardik from Brazil. Uh, he is actually not in Toronto and he has been doing all this uh, journey uh, totally online this year with COVID-19. So I will start with Bruno uh, to please to, to share a little bit of your background and your company so people understand what you're doing. Hi guys, thanks Miriam, thanks for the introduction. Um, yes, I, I have been here in Canada for four years now. I came uh, with NeoJet, which is a platform that connects brokers, uh, jet operators and uh, travelers on business aviation. And it has been a great pleasure to have been developing my company here in Canada. So we've been in market for a year and a half now. And I know that Canada has played a big role in uh, positioning our company to the global market uh, uh, better than I could if I was in Brazil. So my background, I, I was in advertising. Uh, then I uh, started my own agency that evolved to become a product development agency in Brazil. And one of, one of my clients was in business aviation, and that led me into uh, being more involved with, the, with this industry. Uh, well, if you want to know more about my company, I'm pretty sure that Miriam is going to share more details. I think in the invitation there is a link to, to our LinkedIn and, and our other social media platforms. But if you have any questions, I'm always here to answer them. Thank you so much, Bruno. And we have now uh, Kartik. Kartik, can you share a little bit of uh, your company and yourself? Sure. Hi, hi everyone. So uh, I'm CEO and founder of Origins. So we are creating an online platform uh, which will be solving a problem for uh, furniture manufacturers, those are in Canada and basically connecting them to the local consumers, those who are in their local territory. Like if a manufacturer is in Ontario, we are trying to connect that Ontario furniture manufacturer to the customers in Ontario itself. And so, yeah, we are right now currently in development phase and we should be able to launch in next two or three weeks or everything is set up. And there were a lot of challenges because of COVID in my company, as Mariam said, like there are challenges, like the development team that we hired in India, like, uh, like got a COVID uh, pandemic situation over there, they had a COVID outbreak and like we were down with our development process for 15, 20 days over there. And my background, I have like seven years of marketing and advertising experience. I've been in India for, been in Canada from last two years and I have studied here as a marketing program and worked also in an advertising agency. And the idea and innovation like came, like we have been in process of creating the company from last six months. That's, that's about me. Perfect, Karthik. Thank you so much. And uh, finally, Har Harit, um, very nice to see you here today. Uh, so again, you are in Brazil. So uh, share a little bit of your company and your background. Yeah, sure. Thank you very much, Miriam. Nice to meet you again here on, on the net. You know, uh, my name is Harit Hussein. I'm the CEO and founder of uh, Easy Team. Easy Team is a spin off uh, from Triad Group. Uh, we work with telecommunication, and Easy Team is a telecom working with telecom management to large corporations, saving on their own monthly bill. Uh, 
three years ago, we decided to, to take uh, Easy in, in Global, uh, and we started working this year with uh, LATAM, and I'll be more than happy to share my experience, this program, and all ideas. Yeah, and sharing also the experience uh, about, you know, creating a company and expanding a company under COVID-19. My goodness, this is a kind of, a, you know, very uh, different experience for many entrepreneurs around the world uh, that are not just creating, but also expanding. So Absolutely. I'm going to start with some questions here, guys. Uh, so please be free, the three of you, to start, uh, you know, answer questions uh, as you prefer. Uh, but also a uh, comment for the public. Uh, if uh, you have questions, you can also put it in the chat or uh, you know, at the end of the session, you can open your microphone and talk with the entrepreneurs. Uh, so the first question we have is, why did you choose Canada? Many entrepreneurs, international entrepreneurs, uh, look for the US market uh, you know, uh, as a first uh, market entry. So why Canada? So who wants to start? I can start, uh, <laughs> if you guys don't mind. Um, I know that lots of answers they are going to overlap with the other ones because, well, Canada has its features that attracts everyone else's. Uh, but for us, uh, one of the things that we consider and why we chose Canada, and it's because Canada has this unique culture that mixes that business acumen of our North American neighbor uh, while maintaining a certain conservative approach to investments uh, that's very common for our culture in Latin America. So it mixes them both. Um, our second reason is that it provides an easy access to our main market, which is the US. Uh, being based in Toronto, I'm less than three hours away from 30% of the global uh, uh, marketing business aviation. Uh, that's a flight, uh, flight distance. And uh, Canada has always, um, and has also a very open immigration policy making it easy to import in talents when you cannot find someone here. It's very different than US, which was uh, uh, the other country we were considering immigrating to before coming to Canada, because when you run out of talents locally, it's really hard to bring uh, talents in because, well, the age one lottery process is, is so hard and it, it usually prefers company that have been established for a long time. And, and to finalize the other main reason why we chose Canada, uh, just like Singapore and the UAE, uh, Canada has a very global population, people from everywhere. So it's really an amazing test market if you're thinking about expanding your company globally, because you, you are able to, to test from, uh, from how it would work uh, with the Western audience with the, and the Eastern audience, Asian to, uh, to, to to Latin America, all in the same country. So it's an incredible market to launch a global company. It gives you basically all the variables that you can find elsewhere. Thank you, Bruno. That's a really nice explanation. Harith? Yes, uh, I, I would, uh, I agree 100% with what Bruno said. And beside this, uh, there is a big telecom show. The major telecom show in Latin America happened once a year in Sao Paulo, in Brazil. By the way, it's happening right now. Today is the first day. And uh, we, we go to this, uh, this show every year. And uh, it's extremely expensive to visit, just for you to have an idea. It's about $500 just for one person to visit the show. And always we, we are, when we are in the show, we see small Canadian companies. It costs hundreds of thousands of dollars to be there. Then I say, how these guys so small come here? and no one explained. To be very honest, Chinese and Canadian. Then uh, after Latin program, I did understand how, because government incentive these companies to, just for you to have an idea, government pay every cost, hotel, uh, booths, presentation, everything in tax. I mean, they, they, they discount it in tax. But uh, uh, when you see a government uh, uh, helping companies to go global, for sure you will have much more success if you choose other countries. Besides this, in our case, uh, we work with extreme confidential information, telecom confidential information. Um, it's, it, it's, we know that it's very different when you say you are a Brazilian company or even you are a US company, we have a US company, or you are a Canadian company. I will be very honest saying that if you say you are a Canadian company, you are extremely more respected than other nationalities. 
For this reason, we choose to start from zero because we had nothing in Canada. We had a company in, in US, in Brazil, but we started from zero and I'm extremely happy with the results, you know? Thank you, Harith. That's, that's a really good reason. And I think many of the things that you guys are mentioning, maybe many people don't know about that, right? Uh, that, that's really good. Uh, Kartik, what is, yeah. the, what is your reason to choose Canada? Yeah, like I agree with both of them for sure. And like one of the main reasons, like as Bruno said, like if you need workforce, the immigration is a good policy in Canada. You can bring in people from your country if you want someone or like skill demand program, which Canada is like one of the countries which only has that kind of program for skilled trade entries. And in expanding on that topic, like Canada uh, has the second best education and the world and it's ranked 10th for the most economic uh, world by the World Economic Forum for human capital. So like if you even want the talent within the country, the talent is available for you. And like Canada is like for like, I'm into tech startups, so like creating a marketplace. So in case of technology, Canada is like right these days is saying like Silicon Valley 2.0. So like all the technology you need in Canada, all the people that you need is available the government the grant schemes that Canadian government is providing is actually a big incentive like if you having a development fees like if you're uh, hiring people in canada for your development process a part of that is repaid you by the government in terms of taxes so that that is a good point plus the trade agreements of canada which have which they had like they're part of nafta they're part of uh, like economic trade agreement with european union they also part of Trans-Pacific Partnership. So like even if you want, so you don't need privacy policies in European countries and Trans-Pacific con uh, continents. So like one privacy policy and one, like if your product is approved over here, it, you can basically sell anywhere in these countries. So you, you don't need to go and register your company in all these. So that was a major hit. Like if you are thinking about future, um, these are the major two, two or three points that I looked going forward by setting up my company in Canada. Yeah. Thank you so much, Kartik. Now I'm going to skip some questions because I think partially it has been, uh, you know, answered the second question we have. Uh, but, uh, you know, we are living in a very strange year <laughs> when, you know, normally entrepreneurship has been, uh, you know, difficult, but this year has been extremely difficult and you're doing uh, kind of heroic thing here uh, by putting together a company in a different country, hiring people, uh, you know, um, doing the normal stuff that you will do in your own country, but in, in a very different environment that, that you normally will deal with. Um, it, there is normally mistakes that uh, entrepreneurs do when they, they, they actually go through this process. I would like to ask you, what has been the mistakes that you think that you have done uh, this year that it can be preventable uh, for, for other entrepreneurs that are looking into uh, come to Canada and also start expanding business? Not sure who wants to start. I can start with this, Miriam. Okay, Harry, uh, go ahead. Okay, uh, when we uh, started thinking in global, we, uh, we just took our uh, platform, our service, what we learned in United States, and we took it to Canada and we started talking with companies, with people, and uh, uh, that was very hard for us because uh, we are a company extremely based on results. We need to show results to our customer. Who is our customer? large corporation. When we started working in Canada, uh, I don't know if you remember, Miriam, you, you called our attention several times. Hey, uh, but who will be using your system? It's not the company. It, it, these are people. So for us, that was uh, something very new. Uh, we, we, we had to understand the, the message and it's extremely important because bringing result uh, it's it's the consequence of good work of good job you know if you do it right you get results uh in canada for the first time we learned that we need to care about the users themselves not only about the company budget about the company funds uh, company funds is important for sure it is but users are extremely 
important. So our major mistake, I would say, for more than 20 years, we work just looking to a, a company account and never we watch the users. Uh, and with the Latam program, I, we learned how to, to understand, to talk with users, and it's bringing us a huge results. We had to change several aspects in our platform. It's a technical platform. We had to change several, and it's bringing us a huge result. So this is the mistake when we take a product that work in, in Brazil, in our case, and United States, work extremely fine. We take it to a different country like Canada and we hope that it will be working just fine without any change. We, we understood the lesson and we change it and the results are fantastic. Not only for Canada because Canadian market is not a huge market, but uh, 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 the world is not only uh, focused on result. Bring me result, result, result. There is a human side and we did learn this lesson in Canada. Perfect. Thank you so much for sharing that because we, we face that many times with entrepreneurs, uh, you know, it's very difficult to come with a solution that works in their own country and it doesn't work here, uh, you know, necessarily at the same level. Uh, so I'm not sure, Bruno or Kartik, did you want to share something about that, uh, about your experience in making mistakes in this uh, part of growing company? Yes, like, Bruno. Pretty yeah, uh, yeah you Bruno, you're good. Okay, all right. Thank you. Um, oh, I don't even know where to start. We had to pivot about six or seven times. Um, so, of course, uh, the first the first mistake we made uh, is very similar to to Harris uh, in the sense that uh, we had a product that we thought was sellable, and at the end we did have some early adopters but it was so hard to expand because it was based on assumptions and researches of what it was available in the market. Uh, I think one of the things that I learned uh, during this growing up in the immigration process is that uh, you actually have to talk more. Instead of just relying on resources that you have online, just go out, talk to people, talk to the end user, uh, try to understand what's your product market fit uh, because that can change and people have so many different views and you're going to be facing like we are working on a, on a very traditional and conservative industry. Uh, people, I, I have heard people saying, no, there's no room for innovation in business aviation. Uh, so you have to, to take into account even those feedback uh, because it, you know that and, and, and it, it has created a great impact on, on our product because uh, usually every innovation in business aviation, it tends to eliminate the middleman. Uh, and we learned with talking to people that we actually had to include the middleman in the process to, in order to succeed. Um, the second takeaway that I did uh, is how you have to, to build a great team, uh, regardless of whether, you, whether you're build, building this business in your own country or uh, abroad. You have to rely on great people because when the pandemic hit, we had to pivot the business in less than 30 days in order to survive. So, uh, and you can only achieve that if you have a great uh, team working with you and, and, and everyone collaborating and putting the effort into changing uh, the way you do business. Uh, and the last, the last mistake, it was a very personal mistake. It was rushing into coming to Canada. Uh, that was a very big mistake because it just, it's, it is an expensive country. I'm not going to lie. It is a super expensive country. You, you're in the top five cities when it comes to cost of living in the world. And, and you have to plan way ahead before you come because you're going to spend two or three times more than what you have budget before. And that's the reality. Even, even if you're strict with your budgeting, there are so many variables that you only know when you land here uh, that, you, that you do have to plan ahead and and you have to understand that you are starting your life from scratch when you're immigrating i have immigrated to other countries and whenever you you come to a country and mainly in canada uh you have to 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 create so many variables from scratch and that can be as simple as uh getting your credit built up to uh getting your driver's license which 
you take for granted because I did that 25 years ago and, and I never thought I would have to, to re redo uh, driving lessons when, when I moved here. And, and yeah, those, those are things that you learn when you're expanding your business uh, while you're immigrating. Uh, there are so many variables to consider. Just plan ahead and make sure that if you're immigrating, don't rush into moving to the country right away. Go for long periods to these countries. Spend 60 days, 90 days. Get a client on the country that you're immigrating. Because if you're not able to sell uh, to, to someone spending 60 to 90 days here, it's not likely that you're going to sell to anyone spending one or two years. So if you, if you have the chance to come for 90 days and try to, 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 to do some business development in Canada, do it. it. It's important. It's going to show and going to start giving you answers on, on how you can expand and grow your business uh, while being an immigrant. Uh, an immigrant. Yeah, very important points, uh, Bruno. And uh, we get uh, asked many times, why is that, you know, we ask companies to be financially stable? It's because of this, <laughs> it's this very expensive country. And people sometimes don't realize expensive is not the same in their own um, home countries than in here. And what you said is totally true. And many times, you know, uh, before COVID-19, we asked, you know, companies to come here and spend like two, three months because precisely, you know, uh, it's necessary. I, we believe it's necessary to have that uh, human contact, you know, uh, in the environment that, 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 you, that you are providing here, like, uh, you know, get the first uh, sense from your clients and all that. That's totally true. Uh, Kartik, what would you like to share about that? So like my experience was different. Like, uh, like I was here when I, like I was here from last years when I decided to start my company. So it was a bit different for me. I already knew the ecosystem of Canada, how it is working and what are the different criteria. Like I was in marketing, so I was actually working for different companies, startups that are like coming to Canada also and like growing in Canada. But the main thing is like, the money factor, like, but your savings is in back home country. And, and there is a very nice quotation, startup is a race against running out of money. So how will you save your savings back in India, back in India, like if you convert uh, my country's conversion to here, like thousands becomes hundreds and millions becomes thousands. So like you have actually whatever the saving you have back here in country and you are investing that in this country, you have to be very optimal about the budget and about like how you are figuring things out. So yeah, I'm like, if that, that, that this was the same factor with everyone. Like money is is the main thing to be very sound off and not to run out of your cash flow, because if you are done, like you won't be able to survive here. So yeah, and it's a good point. Like Bruno said, like you have to be like come for 90 days. For me, it was a two year period, but yeah, come for some time and look how like the, even the weather is different like from your country so like the weather is suiting you the environment so like you have to be take care of everything when you are coming to Canada for sure. that's true Karthik thank you so much for that and we before we move to the next question I have a question for you Harith uh, from Anna Rivera she uh, is asking how have you achieved that approach to the final use user the approach that you made uh, about, you know, uh, listen to the user and, and you know, contacting them? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if the question regarding how we approach uh, customers in Canada or the end user, but not the company. I think uh, she's I, referring to the final user. So, yeah. Yes, we, we started uh, research talking with end users uh, we discussed this uh, matter. I don't know if you remember, Miriam. We discussed it a lot, and you helped a lot with this information. So basically, I, I, I started this with LATAM, and uh, we talked with our uh, end users in Brazil. These are our customers. And uh, there's something very important to say how we approach uh, uh, end users in Canada. Volunteers. Uh, available from LATAM are extremely helpful helpful with this. Uh, we use them a lot to talk to end users in Canada and they, they made research, they helped us a lot with this. So this is how we did it. Okay, thank you, Harith. Uh, so I will jump to the next question is about the takeaways, uh, but I would like to 
kind of gave a different approach to that question. It's more like, uh, you know, again, COVID-19 has been uh, impacting all uh, businesses. Bruno, you shared something about, uh, you know, pivoting uh, during COVID-19. I'm sure many people are doing it and many people are actually not liking the word pivoting anymore <laughs> because I, I'm sure that, uh, you know, um, they have heard this many times. But I would like to uh, start maybe with Kartik. Uh, Kartik, what are your takeaways this year? Or how do you, you know, I imagine that you had a very different plan this year and kind of everything changed uh, at the end with the whole situation. So what are your takeaways from this year? So yeah, this year, this year like we didn't want it to, like we never imagined, like when we would be launching, like there will be a COVID situation for sure. It restricted my approach to like meeting people. Like we have currently have a 10 people team that are also working in Canada. So like first we could meet freely with each other, but now there is a restriction and we have to be on online. There is a different approach altogether, like even to meet your team members and follow the workflow. It's all different. Like whether you can set up a coffee meeting at a Starbucks or something, if you're freelancing, but now like you have to be on zoom, like, and there is a, there is a difference of personal touch that, that what I feel currently in the scenario. And like when we were poor uh, and the pandemic has like, like my freelancing work for my basic web development, the coding and the back end has been like freelanced in India. And over there, the office that I shared uh, re earlier, like being affected by the, became the hotspot and like out of 10 people over there, seven of them got affected. So they had to shut down. My plan was to launch in October, well before the holiday season. But because of that, it's been postponed to mid of November. And like it's right now, it's, it's looking okay from that perspective. But yeah, so yeah, it affects everyone. Like not, not you can say like, yeah, like we are into technology and we don't need personal touch or human, human touch. But yeah, in some way or other way, it will, the ecosystem has been affected us. Yeah. Thank you, Kartik. Uh, Harith, uh, you are expanding from Brazil. So in your case, uh, you know, um, it, you're, you were planning to come here to Canada, you couldn't actually arrive. We have some people at that time in March that were uh, actually arriving in Canada where the lockdown was happening. <laughs> you didn't have the chance to actually go through that, thanks God. But you know, oh, how, how was your plan before and after and what's your takeaway of this year? Yes, uh, we, 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 we were planning to, to arrive uh, Toronto on April or May, I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, due to COVID, we had to stop it. Frontiers had been closed. Uh, and uh, I will be very honest with you, this didn't affect us. We did the whole program. We, we take all advantage if we are in person or if we are remotely, it didn't matter anything. COVID and our service, our market, it's hard to say, but it was extremely good to us because the more difficult, the more communication you need. So enterprises need much more communication than before and need much more management. So for us, COVID-19, uh, I would say it hurt us not being in Canada, but as Bruno said, uh, uh, you, you need to plan extremely every pass you do. You have a company running out of the country. You need to be sure that the company will not going will not be going down. Uh, for this reason, we we saw that uh, I saw that I need to be here in Brazil. I I, I started the program, but I didn't uh, leave the company here alone. So uh, uh, COVID nineteen did it maybe affected us because uh, without COVID I would be in Canada. But at the end of the day, I, we did the program, we, we, we learned a lot of, with it, and uh, uh, the market just grew extremely high in our product, in our service. So this is the situation we, we face. Yeah, and we saw many companies also that, you know, actually was a good year for them under COVID-19. So, uh, you know, it, it depends on the, the type of technology that you're bringing or, and also the type of service. So that's very true. Thank you so much for sharing that. Miriam, I would say several opportunities are opening mm -hmm. in the market. So uh, there true. is a market. Uh, so COVID is here, but opportunities are here also. 
Yeah, that's true. Thank you so much. Bruno, uh, you also were sharing about, you know, your pivoting uh, time for 30 days, you know, you have to change many things. So I guess you have very different plans at the beginning of this year and ending this year with uh, something different. So what are your takeaways? Uh, uh, the first one regarding, um, let, let me put in, in divide the question in, a, in some stages. The first one, how it uh, affected my participation with Latin. Um, it didn't. I, I think the only thing I have been missing are the Margarita Fridays and and the rest, I think Miriam. And, we and we all missed that. Yes, <laughs> and and I think the entire team has managed to to pull off an amazing structure to to have this program done online. So it, it was really good, and I think the the entire world has now got used to to doing this. And of course, we missed the personal touch, uh, but but it didn't affect on on the quality of information that we draw from the program. Uh, on the second, the second uh, part, we do have, uh, like I said, we, we focus on the middlemen um, for our business. And our business model was based on a franchise model back in 2019. And nobody was investing uh, large sums of capital in, into anything um, when the pandemic hit. So because we were on the expansion process, it, it it, if we hadn't changed to a kind of individual license rather than the franchise model, uh, we would maybe have stuck uh, and not being able to grow with, with COVID. And regarding the demand in business aviation, uh, in the first few months, that was amazing. Like we, we had uh, demand like we had never had before uh, and it was good. But then once people got settled where they wanted, uh, and because frontiers were not opening, uh, it, it poses a challenges because we are in the travel uh, industry and the in travel industry, well, if you if you have cross border restrictions, that becomes becomes really challenging. So we were we started using the opportunity, like Harris said, that's, there's always an opportunity there. For example, from Bahamas uh, to go to Bahamas from the U.S., you cannot go on a commercial flight anymore. The only way to go is on a private jet. So we started using those uh, opportunities to, to start growing a couple of destinations uh, on the way that we, 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 we wouldn't care before. Uh, and, and that can be replicated in, in different places, like uh, going from the UAE to Europe and going from, from Europe to Asia. Uh, when, when it comes to, to business aviation, it has less restrictions and we are taking advantage on those places where business aviation does not have the same restrictions as airlines. So yeah, I, I think those are the, the impacts that we had and, and, and how we cope with that. Sounds <laughs> good. And it's, and it's good to know, you know, how you guys are being able to, uh, you know, pivot and to do something different in a very short time because it's very, a stressful situation when you all have everything planned and then suddenly uh, all goes away and you have to plan again. Um, so I'll go for the last question and guys uh, in the audience, if you have any questions, please let us know in the chat. If you want to ask a question, you can, you know, raise your hand or, uh, you know, ask the questions about this after this final question I have for them. And the final question for you guys is about the tips on entrepreneurs that are thinking to establish business uh, you know, perhaps in 2021, uh, you know, abroad. Uh, what will be your recommendation, your best tip for them once, uh, for those that are thinking in this strategy? So who wants to go first? I, I can start. Uh, I, and I'm going to talk about Brazilians. Uh, I'm Brazilian, so I know how, how Brazilians are thinking about uh, immigrating. Uh, my first tip is to make sure that your moving and your relocation is relevant to the company and not to yourself. Oh, okay, I love Canada as a country. I love the quality of life of Canada and I love living here. It's the first country that I felt home um, since, and, and I have lived in, in lots of countries before. Uh, but make sure this relocation is relevant to your business, that your business is going to profit more than you are going to profit uh, coming to Canada. Uh, the second tip is uh, just be ready and, and make sure that you come and learn. I think I, I, have, I have said a couple of things about uh, spending some time here. I know uh, this will only be possible when the pandemic uh, and the restrictions uh, cool off, 
but uh, that's the other thing. And third, just talk, try to make a sale, do business development rather than immigration work because that's more important than anything. Uh, being able to, to, to make your business being seen in, in the country where you want to establish yourself, whether it is Canada or any other countries that offer startup visas. Uh, just make sure that you do business development, even if you are online like Harley is, and, 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 and then you can test the grounds and understand whether that country is actually going to be a fit. Like on, on the quality of life, I'm going to, to, to support Canada 100% of the way, but just make sure that if you're relocating and becoming an immigrant entrepreneur, you're making this because of your company and not because of your quality of life. That's, uh, otherwise, you have other ways to come. We have, there are other paths that you can explore to. to Thank to you immigrate. so much, Bruno. Uh, mm -hmm. Harit, do you want to go next? Yes, uh, I would say uh, first uh, thing I heard in the LATAM program is Harith, be coachable. Uh, and I'll be honest, I, I did understand, but uh, I didn't understand how deep it is. And today I would say, yes, it makes all sense. Uh, several times in sessions, I had discussions with mentors and uh, I found, hey, how can you discuss my business if I am in this business for re for years and you are just introduced to it for let's say half an hour or maybe one hour how can you discuss with me this you need to understand and then after several times after several uh, uh, discussions i did understand if i am sending a message that that is not extremely clear and understandable by them my customer will suffer the same thing so i need to uh, 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 really be coachable and understand their visions. Uh, this happened several times. You remember this situation, Miriam. Uh, so first thing, be coachable. Now I can repeat it, be coachable. Accept mentors, even they are they understand much less in your business, but be coachable, this is good for you. And second thing, um, uh, research is important. Uh, uh, talk to the market is extremely important, but you need to go for sales. This is the only way you will understand if your product will be acceptable or not. Because uh, I found several times that we, we stay in research in, 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 you know, for, for a long time. And when you go to, to try selling your product, you, you see completely different. So uh, research, yes, but go to the market, try selling your product. If it makes sense, you, you will, see that if not you need to change something Thank uh, you, Harith, I, I just want you to 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 add to her i think being coachable is the best soft skill that you have to develop uh when you're starting a company because if you are not able to to get uh the the suggestions and the feedback from the mentors and and thanks miriam you have introduced us to such an amazing at mentors uh, during this process that was amazing uh, you're not going to grow as a company and 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 if is 100 percent right there it, it has to be something that you have to learn thank you bruno and kartik uh what is your best recommendation for entrepreneurs that want to uh, you know enter and and expand in canada so um so the best part is like i want to recommend latin startup for sure like if you are trying or planning to move to canada and if you have an opportunity to join an incubator program or an accelerator program in that country that really accelerates your business growth in that country because like especially like I'll, i can talk about latin startups because like they will help you to have your market validation like is your company is workable or not and the mentors that are still here will tell you the fact no this is like this is right for you, this is wrong for you. Like when I started, I wanted to white label my product and then start like not basically white labeling, creating an e-commerce platform. But like they told me like you can, it's better to go for like a marketplace model where you don't have to invest in product and all. And that actually really opened my like new different horizons for my business. Like, yeah, this is easier to grow and basically will require less of my efforts towards in product development and all, I can actually create with, with the same concept, like creating customizable furniture, 
which are made in Canada, taking it from white labeling to basically to marketplace model. So yeah, having a good mentor or a good incubator is a really one which thing can really help you to make it or break it. And yep, so that's, that's what my takeaway was. Oh, thank you so much, Karthik, for that. Yeah, very, uh, very nice, um, you know, recommendation, guys. And thank you for sharing your stories uh, with everyone. So I will open now for questions. If somebody has questions for them, this is the time for uh, open your mics or, uh, you know, put it in the chat so you guys can have an interaction with uh, Bruno, Harith, and Karthik. Uh, so I'll see this still people coming to the call just the last minute and so that but that's good uh so anna do you have a question do you want to open the uh, um a, the microphone and ask the question yes thank you so much no problem so thank you miriam and thank you latam startups for giving us this space to share with them and to uh, learn from their experiences so my question is basically regarding the, the uh, teams around you so is your like your key staff are they from canada are they from your countries did you use the help of any uh you made it clear in the case of mentors but what about uh, partners or consultants did you uh use the help of any of those uh, figures to open the markets here in canada so who wants to uh, start answer that question uh, oh, I yeah, go, go ahead, Harris. No, no, you can go ahead. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, the answer is we, we used uh, uh, during the program, we've been introduced to several uh, 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 mentors with extreme uh, uh, large experience in the market. Uh, in our case, we've been introduced with a person with 30 years in telecommunication, not only in Canada, but yes, in, in United States and Europe and Asia. And he has been our mentor. He is our mentor uh, up to now, and we are involving him in several uh, um, discussions, meetings, etc. Uh, so uh, uh, using a Canadian team is extremely helpful for us. Uh, and Latam introduced us uh, all what we need to be in. I remember we had a, a, a discussion, we need an accountant with a very specific job uh, uh, in telecommunication. And uh, Miriam Latam introduced us, a, a Latam accountant who's extremely experienced in telecommunication and we are using even for other countries. So uh, 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 there are, uh, I mean, we, we have our stuff in Brazil, but it's a local stuff. And in Canada, we got a, a stuff that is helping us uh, in, in all our needs uh, around the globe. Thank you, Harith. Uh, I don't know, Bruno or Kartik, do you have any answer for that question? Yeah, um, we did. Uh, when, we, when we first came to Canada, uh, and most of our founders are here in, in, in different phases. But when, when we came to, to Canada, uh, we didn't have a Canadian uh, talent that was on a senior position in the company. Uh, we did have designers and, and, and development team that was from Canada, but it didn't move the needle that much. Uh, it was when we first hired uh, our C-level from Canada, that's when we noticed a big jump uh, in the company. So definitely having someone local, which will help you navigate the market. Uh, remember that when you move to, a, to another country, you start from scratch. So if, you, if you're able to, to bring uh, to your team someone that is already native here, uh, it's going to help you overcome a couple of challenges, mainly when it's regarding to how people trust you uh, coming to the market. Thank you so much for that. Um, not sure, Karthi, could you want to complement something or we go to the next question? Yeah, you can, we can like, like Bruno covered the point that I also wanted to say. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, okay, sounds good. So Eduardo, you are there. Uh, maybe you want to ask the question you directly? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I'm, I'm with the cohort with LATAM uh, doing the second scale. And we're with the issue about directors. Uh, for, for us in Latin America, directors are 
are more like an advisors. And you said, uh, Hadi, that you had a mentor. How do you work with him? Is he on a, on a paid fee or he's just for, for nonprofit helping? How do you handle that issue? Uh, he is helping us. He is joining us in all our meetings. Uh, he is mentoring us. Uh, what we had to do is to, to bring a, an insurance. He is not an official director, but he is a, a, an advisor. I think uh, this is the best way for him to understand our work because you, you are coming from other countries. So, and in Canada, being a director is taking a responsibility. So usually you can make a, an insurance, but the best way is, and that was his suggestion and Latam suggestion, uh, go and work together for him to understand what you are doing and for you to see how can he, can he help you with that. Um, uh, now we, we are sure that he, he, he will be one of our directors when effectively we starting our sales from Canada. For now we are sailing from Brazil. But uh, as soon as uh, COVID ends, uh, I will be myself, my CEO, my CFO will be in Canada. And uh, for sure, he will be our main uh, director. And the way how to, to find these directors, I would, uh, it, it's clear for me, mentors, all of them are business people. These are companies, these are, and if you find one of them in, or understand your area, uh, not the only one who helped us, but there are other persons extremely prepared for that and they, they own companies. So I think this is the best way because we, we don't know many people in Canada. So LATAM program is an opportunity for you to meet these people. So once you find someone that can help you with your business, go ahead and discuss. No, a lot of worries. How can I hire him as a director? You can start mentoring with him, ask him for mentoring. And the thing that I think uh, maybe we forgot to say about it, Canadians are extremely wishing to help people. All mentors are extremely helping. So if you go and say, hey, I want you to mentor me, to go with me to this meeting, they for sure they will accept and they will be helping you. One thing that, that happened with Harit, just to complement that answer, is that he wanted to pay Tony and Tony refused to receive payments uh, at the beginning because he wanted to, uh, you know, first know the company. Um, this is very strange for some companies, international companies, that people just refuse to get paid. Uh, but this is very common here. <laughs> Sometimes the directors wants to just help. Um, but I, I also wanted to uh, extend that question to Bruno, as uh, Eduardo was asking the question, because Bruno, you have a very um, impressive board of directors. So how did you get involved with these people that are, you know, helping your company? Um, well, there, there, there are so many ways that you can get. Like the first, I'm going to talk about two different scenarios where we got this board of directors coming together. Um, the first one was uh, I approached him as a client uh, on a position, tried to sell a product to him, and he was about to 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 become one of the franchises uh, back in 20, 2019. and we got so involved uh, with this that. It became he, we started this relationship that where he became our mentor, and then suddenly we offer him, and this is what impresses, and this is the way that I think. I'm in a board of directors of other four companies here in Canada now, just helping people, uh, and, and this this the way that I brought Marshall into our company was by uh, giving him an equity based. Uh, position in the company so we didn't have to well giving him paying him seven digits six digits is it's not going to move the needle for him he's also already super wealthy so there was no money that i could offer him that would be enough so we just offer a participation in the company and like i said in the previous question it just changed the way that our company was perceived by the industry uh, just because he was he has been in business aviation for 30 years uh, and he was like super respected as a CEO um, of other businesses, including being the board of directors of Air Canada for some time. So it, it, it's been great. Uh, the other one, uh, we 
we had flaws and unfortunately in my business in my industry it's super hard to find uh, people through incubators uh, you can find like Miriam has introduced us to a couple of people at Bombardier and, and on other places but uh, we needed a head of experience someone that was uh, on on the everyday contact with the end user and then we approached uh, through an introduction with our other mentor uh, we approached another person uh, and just opened the books and like I said Canadians are so willing to help all the time all the time if you ask for help and you you include them in the conversation uh, they're going to be there for you they're going to be there for you <laughs> that's true uh, Kartik did you have anything to answer in that question so my getting a board of directors into the company was a different scenario altogether. Like I was in Canada when when I met that guy, and like I wanted to start something in furniture, and there was a scenario like I went for a conferencing event, and that was for Google, and I met them, and he and like it's good to choose your director who is from the same industry, like what. Bruno did like to someone who is from the industry itself. Like I did the same, like he was from the furniture industry itself. Like he has like uh, 15 years of experience in working in Canadian furniture industry itself. And um, it actually helped me like his name as a reference when we are, when I'm meeting the different manufacturers to come on board, just by taking his name or his reference, like they just open the door. Like I don't have to cold call them or like fix up a meeting, sending them emails and following up. And so I just, give a conference call with that with that with my director and they are ready to meet me up and like whatever time they say because he has a name in the industry so that actually helped like to have a board director in the country and like not only in the country also from your industry that also makes a difference so that's what my takeaway from yeah, thank you so much, Kartik. And and it's very uh, it's very uh, useful that that uh, question, Eduardo, because certainly board of directors is um, you know one thing that the companies have to think about. And uh, you know the best you can do is to have people with a lot of experience in your board of directors that can you know help you uh, to introduce uh, key people in the market so your company can grow faster. Um, so I guess there is just one more question here and we are uh, coming to close to one hour. So I'm going to finish with this, this question here. And later uh, our marketing and events coordinator is going to send an email, uh, you know, with the recording session that we have today. And also, you know, LinkedIn profile from Harit, Bruno and Kartik. Uh, maybe people want to connect with you guys and, and maybe continue the discussion later. But Seth uh, is asking us if uh, Latam helped with companies after they graduate from the incubator, um, like a few years in the company wants to go public. And does uh, Latam continue providing resources uh, from uh, incubated companies? So um, the straight answer to you is that we have so far 90 companies since 2017 that we have helped. And um, personally, I feel like I have 90 kids. <laughs> so they never, dis, uh, you know, they never disconnect uh, from, uh, you know, the LATAM community. Uh, we have amazing uh, staff and community in here. Uh, so we never uh, finish the, um, let's say, um, you know, the help as much as we can. We are a small incubator accelerator. And then because of that, you know, we try to do our best with our resources. Uh, but when we cannot help, for sure, we can do, uh, uh, you know, introductions with other people that can help around. Um, so in, for, uh, uh, for the person that is asking for, uh, you know, emails and all that, uh, we'll send that privately to, uh, you know, if you, you need something, uh, the best way to connect with us is to contact at latamestartups.org and we will be happy to pass you, uh, you know, that, that in, uh, any information you may need. Uh, so there, Gabi just uh, sent uh, to everyone the uh, LinkedIn profile. Uh, we hope that, uh, you know, that um, you guys in the audience have uh, you know information about these companies and how they have been uh, doing their uh, expansion and growing their companies here in Canada. Certainly 
this is not an easy uh, thing to do. Uh, so really congratulate everyone that, uh, you know, is doing uh, or is creating companies right now or growing companies is, is amazing. So thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Seth is saying that all the best for all the companies and look forward to flying with Neo Jets. <laughs> Oh, so, looking forward to seeing you too, Seth. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So, guys, thank you so much for coming to this webinar. This will be shared again in our YouTube channel and in the internal messages. And thank you uh, to Harit, Bruno, and Kartik for their participation today. Thank you, Harit. Thank you, thank you Kartik. Okay. Thank you, Miriam. Bye.